Right. Homebrew antenna stroke rig switch part five. Now I've done a few bits and pieces to this um, since uh, the last thrilling episode and uh, I've mounted the relays. I decided not to stagger them, I've mounted them in a line. This is all the normally closed contacts here and they're all uh, connected together with a bit of one mil wire. These are all the normally open contacts also soldered together with a bit of one mil wire. And when I was thinking about staggering the relays, I thought, well, if I stagger them around, these are going to be longer, and um, it could actually make matters worse. I don't really like them running parallel like that because there's probably going to be some capacitive coupling. Just have a chat on uh, on two meters, and uh, um, with uh, with a friend of mine who suggested that the there may be a bit too much capacitive coupling between the internals of the relay and the actual case but um, anyway it's amateur radio it's it's very much a case of uh, suck it and see so um, I'll uh, I thought I'd show it to you before I put the the coax in because once the coax is in you're not going to be able to see the DC wiring um, I took uh, Musa's suggestion on board about the inline fuse that's a very good suggestion uh, thank you for that one Musa and um, there is the inline fuse there so the power comes in there inline fuse there now remember what I was saying about when you make these little projects just mark it all out and drill all the holes before you put anything on and the reason for that is once you've got things on it's difficult to drill holes in it in the right place because you can't draw lines across panels and stuff like that and the fuse holder mounting is a pretty good example of that as you can see that is not in a nice straight line. It's off to the it's off to the side there. I just drilled that by sight, so I couldn't get a ruler in there. It's too cluttered, and uh, that's a very good example of what not to do. Okay. Uh, you'll also see that um, I have trimmed the shaft to size, and I've put on the knob. It looks a little bit like a, oh, I don't know a knob from the 50s, but if it's good enough for Thunderbirds, it's good enough for me. Right, now I've got a power supply and uh, I can put some volts into this thing. Put the volts in there. I've also added uh, an off position on, the, uh, on, on a previous episode. I said that this, I was going to make this a four position switch. But th it then occurred to me that it might be handy if, if, it, if this ends up being used as an antenna switch it'd be handy to have uh, an off position so with no, none of the relays energized they will all be connecting the uh, the, um, the coaxes the, the, to ground they'll be shorting the coaxes out so it's actually a five position switch now it's off one two three four sounds like relay two is a little noisier than the others um, Switch the meter on. Now at rest, uh, probably be easier with one of these. And I'll only need one hand to move the probes around. Okay, so this is all the normally normally closed contacts. Now with all of the uh, relays off, none of them energized. All of the commons. These are the commons here. Um, should be connected to uh, all the normally closed. That one is, so is that. There we go. So they're all connected to uh, all connected to ground. That's exactly what we'd expect to see. I'll energize relay one. That one's not connected to ground. The others are. Relay two. That one's not connected to ground. The others are relay three, not connected, and relay four, not connected. And all the others are, so that looks pretty good. <coughs> now the actual RF out, if it's going to be a rig switch, will go out through this, and there'll be a bit of RG58 going from there over to there. Braid will go on there, and the center will go on there. Um, if I turn that off, so if I energize relay one, so if I click that onto, so now I'll put it on the normally open rail. That's the switched rail, if you like. 
and I'll, there's relay one, I'll just energize it. Yeah, that's fine. There's relay two. Yeah, relay three. Relay four. Yeah, amazing. Um, I've measured the current drawn by the relays. It's less than 80 milliamps, it's about 75 milliamps. So um, very, very little um, power drain. Now, I'll just do you a quick doodle of uh, what we've got because the design has changed a bit since the uh, since the original scrawling on the board. So where's the? Uh, hang on, it's a bit solder here. I just want to make sure you can see the board. It's probably spelled B O R E D, but uh, sorry about that. No refunds. Let's go around the back here and have a look through the camera. Yeah, okay, so I'll bring that up a bit like that. Oops, wrong way. It's been a long day. As you can see, we're out of sunshine. It's uh, in the evening here. Oops, back there, gone. Do you think talking to it will help? Right. So. You can see there I've added the uh, I've added the fourth relay, and we've also added also added an extra relay coil. off so that's what we've that's what we've got at the moment so we've now got four relay coils because we've got four relays because originally I only had three so I've added a relay I thought well in for a penny in for a pound it's going to not work with four just as easily as it will not work with three and uh, if it does work it'll be a bit more versatile I haven't put the diode in yet oh and uh, I'm going to put a capacitor across there as well just uh, just across there like that just to uh, just to decouple any RF that might get onto that 12 volts and only get back into the radio so that's showing relay one energized showing our off position where none of the relays are energized and that's all that's in it so uh, if it works and someone does want to make one then uh, it's not uh, not particularly challenging okay and uh, although it's sort of the cost is blowing out a little bit it's, uh, it's a lot more expensive than uh, I thought it was going to be but um, by the time you bought the box and you bought the relays I mean these are eight dollars each and bought those bought the box I bought these today um, Little uh, little cable clips, sticky back cable clips to, to tidy up the DC wiring. In fact, there's one in there. You can probably see that there, and you can see how much tidier. I hope you can see that. Anyway, I'll have to go back and look at the camera angle again. I'm going to stand it up and just adjust that camera angle because you don't need to see me. Ah, what you need to see is that. There we go. But it's difficult to get the um, get it right because I have to sort of stretch it out to show you the board. I don't know whether it's worth doing that or not. But um, I was looking; someone left a link for something they'd made earlier on. And I thought it would have been quite good to have a, uh, a look at the circuit of it. Um, now you can see those wires are coming around there like that. They go under one of those little clips, just a sticky back clip that I put there be another one there, probably another one round there, which will tidy this DC wiring up very nicely. There's only three wires going through that clip because I bought the wrong size. I should have bought the next size up, which could have taken the five wires. But uh, that would be like that. There would be another one there, another one down there. Once that's all neatly tied up in there, I'll, uh, I'll put the RG58 on to the... Uh, so this will go to relay one, that one there, relay two, relay three, and relay four, a bit of RG58 from here across those two up to that 
and uh, be ready to squirt some signals through it and actually see if it's uh, um, if it's any use. Well, I hope you enjoyed that or found it interesting. Um, thank you very much for watching.